CrewDownRoadsHouseMath.com with a quick screencast covering fractions. All right, fractions. Three-period lesson always starts it off. If you don't know what a three-period lesson is, then uh, look around on CrewDownRoadsHouseMath.com. There's a part concepts tab, and uh, look it over. You can see, but three-period lesson starts off every lesson when you introduce new concepts. And the concept today is we can name this anything we want, right? I can use my imagination and call the pieces whatever I want to call them. So I start off here with three because I had students that had done uh, a lot of, you know, they've done many lessons. So this isn't going to be that wild. But if you were starting with newer or beginner students, maybe you'd want to start with a two block and call that a one. And then talk about halves and so forth. But here we're going to talk about thirds. So here I have one. And this is my new one. So if this is one, then what's this? Let them sit there and tell you. All right? Don't tell them. And then I talk about okay. This is just this blown up. These are the. This is this same thing. This is a bigger picture of it. If I want to multiply this by something, or if I want to take something away from each one of these, or take one part out of each one of these, how many parts would I have to take to make one? If I had to take one from each, right? <laughs> or if I had to take a part out of each one of them. That's the way you verbalize it. If I took a part out of each one of these, what would I have to take from each one of these to get a one? And a little kid can tell you, if you take one-third, you get one-third here, one-third there, one-third there. Oh, reciprocal, but when they're little kids, and these were the kids I was working with were seven and eight, you don't need to talk about reciprocals. Um, I get one whole one made of three parts, right? One third. So if I got three of these together here, then I would get a whole one. So they can see this is one third, and three thirds is the same thing as one. Hmm, and then you can talk about what's four, four fourths? What's five fifths? What's a hundred over a hundred? What's seven over seven? What's pi over pi? What's x over x? And you can go off on a whole tangent there about one, knowing what one is. But here we're just going to play around and, and use the concept of this can make this, and we name this one, and we name this one third. Okay, and we can go, and you'll see later on that we are gonna f get to know no fun and get back to one, and uh, concepts of one uh, in much more detail, and it's gonna make math so easy when I know no fun and get back to one. When I do problem solving, when I'm doing algebra, when I'm doing all kinds of things, uh, no fun and get back to one comes in very very handy. Okay, so getting to know what one is, right? And so here, this is one. This is my point of reference, right? This is one third. So now show me four thirds. Well, there's four thirds. And very quickly they can see that if I want to get out seven thirds, it's faster to get out these guys than it is to get a whole bunch of these out. Right? Again, this is you know economy of symbol, economy of motion, economy of you know pieces, where you use the fewest pieces, right? Get it out as fast as possible because the human mind wants to work very very quickly. So rather than having to get out seven of these, or later on 14 or 15 of these, and count them out one at a time, just grab the three blocks. And every time I grab a three block, I know I have a one. Okay, so first off, we put them in a position where they can't fail. All we're doing is counting out thirds, right? Second, degree of difficulty. Right? Go up the scale slowly. And then when we start using... Uh, symbols or adding more symbols we also add the symbols in degrees so here we see that four thirds and one there's my one and one third are the same and seven thirds means the same thing as two and one third and not talking about division not doing any right not finding out how many of these are contained in there I just said count out seven thirds we're counting because that's all math is so give me seven of these there's one two three four five six seven of them and we happen to group a few of them to make it easier to grab them. All right, so now 13 thirds. Again, I'm not doing division, right? I'm just counting out thirds. So 3, 6, 9, 12, right? Oh, we can start learning skip counting as we learn our multiplication. All right? So little kids, you can start with little, and you'll see me doing this with 4 and 5-year-old kids too. Not, 7 and 8, no big deal. All right, so now they see, oh, 13 thirds is the same thing as 4 and 1 third. There they are, 1, 2, 3, 4 of them and a third. All right, so getting out 17 thirds, no problem, super easy. Now, this child 
and another child together were working on this problem, and the little boy said to the little girl, you know, if you count out all those units and so forth, and there's a two in there, that would be two-thirds, it's going to take you forever. Why don't you just grab a whole bunch of threes, right? And it'll be a whole lot faster. She goes, oh, okay. All right? They help each other. There's all the other pieces she was going to use, and then she just grabbed some threes, and there it is. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen and two. So now when you say things like the most threes you can get out of 17, it makes sense. We can also start talking about later on, as we do this lesson again, uh, with different pieces, because you know we use fours and fives and sixes and so forth, how many of these are contained in this? And that's upside down. Let's do it the right way. Okay, there you go. And we can talk about how many threes are contained in 17. Well, there's five and two-thirds in them. And see here, we have the nice progression. There's the one, there's one-third, there's a picture, right? So the drawings and the symbols go together, right? And it's crucially important that they get a chance to draw them and play. And then they ask, could we color these if we wanted to? And I said, of course you could color them. Do it in your own time, because it takes too long, and, you know, I charge quite a bit per hour, so your parents would rather you learn these concepts. But if you want to go home and, and color to your heart's content, have a good time with it. And I give them some homework problems where they got, you know, bigger problems to do. And it would take them no time because all they're going to do is count out 17 thirds, right? And so here is a picture of them grouped in threes nicely, right? And then two more. There's five and two thirds. So they completely understand what they're doing. It's not just rules and process. It's concepts. They understand, oh, I'm getting out 17 thirds. Now, here we have a little problem with symbols because that's supposed to be a five, no big deal, right? Just correct. There's no, you know, don't have to put a no in a lesson. That's not the right way to draw. Just here, we're going to correct this and make it look more like this. Because these symbols right here do not tell me about this. Right? So we threw an equal sign in there. And we talked about that that means it's same. And then we got a big five and then the two thirds. And then talked about what this means. Right? Two of the thirds kind. This is telling me what the one is. Oh, this is telling me what the one is. This tells me what the one is. Every time I count out three of these guys, that's one. And you can see the light bulbs going on in their eyes. Okay, so here's a bigger problem. 19 thirds. Well, now I just got a whole bunch of these, right? And again, can you see how the multiplication goes right along with the division and fractions and understanding what we're doing? Okay, so 19 thirds, same as 6 and 1 third. Simple. And then we move on, like I said, to quarters, and then we'll move on to fifths, and sixths, and sevenths, and eighths, and tenths, and so on. Well, of course, turns is going to be its own lesson, because it's going to be uh, talking, of course, about decimals. But uh, just understanding that, and do you see how it's just natural, which is just a natural progression, getting up to tenths? Um, understanding that, oh, let's see, if I have a quarter, what's another name for a quarter? And then we'll see, of course, I've got quarters out here for you, so if your kids will be able to see naturally, but another name for a fourth is a quarter. And why do we call them quarters? Well, because it takes four of them to make a dollar. Oh. All right, so here's our new one, and there's our quarter, and again, a three-period lesson, and then we can start to do more, right? And again, simple, start off simple. Why does it have to be hard? Can you get me out nine-fourths? There they are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? Oops, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that one's 9, and that works out to be 2 and a quarter. Very simple, very easy. Uh, Crouton Ramones House of Math.com for more. Check out the blog, check us out on Facebook. Uh, it's the easiest, simplest way to get mathematical concepts across the children you're ever going to find.